Hiya! So today I am going to be talking about supernatural powers that I would love to have and some books that feature them. So obviously I read a lot of paranormal romance and some fantasy romance as well and so you get as well as some really cool supernatural creatures, so your werewolves, your vampires, you get some really cool powers and that's what I'm talking about today. So we'll start off nice and altruistic and we'll go with the ability to heal people. Obviously the ability to heal yourself would be quite useful but healing others, quite a nice one. So the first one that I, I would recommend for healing powers is Iron and Magic by Elena Andrews. Um, so this is a spin-off of the Kate Daniels series um, featuring Hugh and Elara. So Hugh is in quite a lot of the Kate Daniels books, not necessarily the nicest guy, um, definitely some issues that go on there, but he does have really strong healing powers. He is really precise in what he can do, and when he wants to help someone, he can definitely save them. If he's not interested or there's nothing in it for him, eh, he's not gonna bother though. Uh, really nice guy. <laughs> Um, so this one is the story of what happens as a result of things that Hugh goes through during the Kate Daniel series. You can read it as a standalone but it is better in context um, and it is a marriage of convenience as well. Love marriage of convenience, I think it's a great trope. Um, and yeah, and genre wise I would say this is definitely urban fantasy um, rather than paranormal romance. But if you want a nicer character um, with healing abilities, then I would go for Rowan Thorne in From Bad to Curse. This is the second book in the Witches of Thistle Grove series. The first one is Payback's a Witch. Um, and you could probably read this by itself. I'll be honest, I had quite a big gap between them and barely remembered anything from the first one. So yeah, you'd probably be fine. So this is a romance between Rowan and Isadora. They are from rival families um, within the town, but they have to get together to investigate why someone in Rowan's family uh, has been massively injured. Um, and it looks like it's gonna be, it's someone from Isadora's family that did it. So Rowan's abilities are growing um, and healing comes as part of that so he can just by holding someone's hand sense where there's problems in them and kind of bring them to life using his healing powers and yeah so really enjoyed that one. So then the next power that I would love to have and if you know a lot about books that I'm obsessed with this probably won't come as much of a surprise is telekinesis. I love seeing telekinesis in paranormal romance so the ability to move objects with your mind. I just think it's such a cool power. Love to have it. So many practical uses. Um, yeah it would just be a lot of fun. Um, so the first book that I have to recommend for this is definitely one that I am obsessed with um, and that is Caressed by Ice by Nalini Singh. So this is the third book in the Psy Changeling series and this is a romance between Judd and Brenna. So Judd is a Psy so he has psychic abilities and Brenna is a wolf changeling. Um, in the Snow Dancer pack. So we've got the nice barrier there and they have to work together for a few things. But Judd is telekinetic. So that's his speciality. He's very good at what he does. Uh, very powerful, can use his powers in all sorts of different ways. And one of the really fun things that happens in this series is that when Psy lose control of their emotions, so when they have very strong emotions, they also lose control of their abilities. So 
if he gets very excited at things like that, then things start flying all over the place. It's fantastic. I love Judd. He's one of my favourites. Yeah. Great one. And it's only the third one in the series as well. So it's pretty quick to get to. And then the other one that I have got, which has an amazing title, is Always Practice Safe Hex, which is book four in the Stay a Spell series. So this is the romance between Gareth, who is a Grim, and Livy, who is a witch. Now Livy's powers are charisma. Um, it's all about people pleasing, making people feel at ease. Fine, nothing special. Um, but Gareth has, among other things, very strong, very precise telekinetic abilities. I have to say, this book was just one of those ones where, you know, you read it sometimes and you're like, I feel like this was written for me. It has pretty much everything that I like. It's got a good level of plot. It's got a good level of steam. It has a bisexual heroine, which I love to see bisexual rep in an MF romance. Probably going to do a video about that soon if I get that far. Um, and then when his skill set turned out to include telekinesis, I was sold. Um, so yeah, this is lots of forced proximity, so working rivals who are forced to work together. As I say, it is book four in the series. You could read it separate, but I recommend reading the whole of the series because it's just awesome. So then a slight variation of telekinesis, being able to move objects, would be teleportation, being able to move yourself. So the first book that I would recommend is No Rest for the Wicked, which is the second book in the Immortals After Dark series. Um, this is very much a series that you can read out of order, a lot of people do, and a lot of people do actually recommend starting with this one because there are a few consent issues in the first book, um, and this one's just better, generally. So this is a romance between Sebastian, who is a vampire, and Catherine, who is a Valkyrie. Um, there are lots of different factions that are going on in the law. Um, they meet kind of by chance and then he wants to track her down. So the vampires in this law can teleport to a place. So a place that they know they can go there. But what Sebastian uh, develops the ability to do is to teleport to a person. So after he meets Catherine by chance, he is desperate to meet her again. And he works out that he can focus on her as his point for where he goes to and end up in places that he's never been before. It's it's really good fun as a story. Um, there's like this massive scavenger hunt challenge thing, um, which they're sort of working on with like massive prizes and massive implications. Um, but yeah his ability to teleport is one of the many amazing things about him and of course again if you know me quite well this won't be a surprise but i can't mention teleportation and not mention basic from shield of winter so this is again back to the side changing series um and again one of my absolute favorite characters uh he is just amazing he appears quite a lot throughout the series. So in this uh, in this world, teleportation is very much a subdivision of telekinesis. So his designation is a TKB. Um, he gets used a lot for shuttling people around and things like that. And there's a really nice balance because he has quite a hard shell from the way he's been treated, he's essentially just been used for his abilities forever. Um, and then we have got Ivy, uh, who is an empath and is a much softer uh, character. So even though it's Psy Psy, we've got two very different personalities in here. And yeah, he's just fantastic. Also, do you remember I mentioned with the last side change ring about when emotions get high, their powers get used. I mean, just imagine what happens if your power is teleporting. So good. So then the last one uh, that I have is the ability to tell if someone is lying. Now, 
This kind of sounds like a trust issue sort of thing, but I actually think that if you know, people are going to be a lot more honest with you and they're going to be a lot more true to themselves. I think it makes like you as an individual much more true to yourself if you lived in a world where you were just a, a human lie detector. So the first one that I have got for this is A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. So this is actually a fantasy romance, unlike all the paranormal romances that I have got. And we have got Kat and Griffin. Um, so Kat has a lot of magic abilities, but the main one that is referenced throughout is the fact that it physically hurts her if someone around her tells a lie. So she always knows um, anything like that. And then we have got Griffin, who just doesn't lie to her. He never does. What he does do is kidnap her, um, tie her to a horse, and take her across the country. Um, fantastic book. So I've read, I've only read books one and two in the trilogy so far. Um, I've been borrowing them from my library. It's taken me a little while to go through them because there's just so many books. Um, but, but really great fantasy romance. And yeah, just the interesting ways that it comes up with the fact that like she knows if someone's lying but then sometimes it's like they're telling the truth but have they said everything i don't know uh, so yeah that works really well and then the other book that i would say for the ability to tell the truth and you might have been expecting this to appear in telekinesis earlier if you are an elena andrews fan but that is burn for me which is the first book in the hidden legacy series so we have got Nevada in here, who is the eldest of the Baylor sisters, um, and she is a walking lie detector. When someone is talking, she gets a tingle through her, she knows, are they telling the truth, are they not? Um, she's not a powerful member of the Magical Society. She runs an investigative agency, but she's definitely not in like the levels of the elite magic users, but she has plenty enough to be getting on with what she's doing. Um, and then our hero in this trilogy is Rogan. Um, he is a dual prime, so he is like a very powerful magic user. He is part of the highest circles of the people who have their respect for their magic. Um, but one of his powers is telekinesis. I just happen to think in this case that Nevada's power is the one that's worth mentioning because I think it's really cool. So this is one of my all time favorite series. Um, it has got detective elements. It's got a really great world um, and really great family vibes. It's just so good. What I will say is that I would love <laughs> to include the second trilogy um, with their magic powers. So Catalina's powers are really awesome. They're also really spoilery. You don't find out until like two books into Nevada's trilogy what they are. So I really want you to read this, but I'm not going to talk about what they are. But both of these guys have fantastic abilities as well. So there you go. There's some supernatural powers that I would love to have and some books that feature them. Uh, let me know if you have got any recommendations for books that have any of these powers featured or also what supernatural abilities you would love to have um and maybe i can uh, check some of those out as well but yeah thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time